So I think the BA is basically sort of supposed to be a degree that lets a student sort of get a computer science degree without getting a BS. So when I came to DU, I wanted to get a major in journalism uh, for sure. And I also wanted to get a major in computer science, but getting a BA and a BS at the same time requires like a lot of credits. I would have had to stay at school for maybe like even another year. Um, but the BA basically uh, allows you to take a lot of core computer science classes that a lot of, of the BS students take without having to get all that extra credits. Yeah. It was hard for me to say no to coming out to Denver, Colorado. When I came to visit the first time, um, we drove by a bus that was taking a group of students up to the mountains. They all had their skis and snowboards. And um, my mom looked over at me and she saw me looking at that group of students. And uh, she was like, well, after that, I knew he was just going to come here. So it was a pretty, pretty easy decision. Um, I originally came here to um, pursue mechanical engineering. And um, I took procedural programming my first quarter. and. Uh, ended up kind of falling in love with the coding world. So um, I made the switch and I don't regret it at all. It turned out to be a good fit for me, uh, both with where my family was located and wanting to stay close to the Denver area, uh, as well as it did offer um, a lot of interesting things with uh, the CS program. Okay, so the BA in Applied Computing is, in my opinion, a beautiful degree. The idea behind it is you get a firm founding in computer science, but then you take that uh, foundation in computer science and you apply it to some other discipline. Half of the sort of credits needed for the degree are all electives. So the first 20 credits or so, um, it's those required courses that a lot of other comp sci students take. But then the other 20 credits are just elective courses that can actually be from other departments as well. So in the embedded systems class, uh, we're all provided a robot. Um, it has a specific design and um, it all works with the uh, XMOS microcontroller. It started with me just wanting to build my own robot so I could keep working on my programming skills um, pertaining to this kind of project. Um, eventually it turned into me wanting to do an independent study and um, incorporating another component onto the, uh, the front of the robot, which ended up being a uh, robotic arm. That was a little more tricky for me. That was the biggest, uh, the biggest, uh, a challenge I faced was implementing the whole thing. But um, after getting a list of parts for how to build my own robot, um, I went into the, uh, the robotics lab here. I, I get everything built and then I finally figured out um, how to get everything to work together properly. Um, it took, I think it was three days in a row, seven hours a day. Um, so after this 21 hour um, binge of programming and you know just going through the internet and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work and how these will work together um, I finally you know figured it out 2300 lines of code later and uh, it all it all culminated to the robot which now can drive around uh, remote from my computer um, pick things up bring it back to me um, and I'm, I'm pretty uh, pretty proud of this of this project that I made. Yeah, I was uh, with Professor Chris in a game development class and that was right when I started to work with VR and uh, in Unity, the I had taught myself Unity over the years, but during his 10 week class, it started to click on how different functions worked and how um, to, to actually build code that wasn't uh, just spaghetti. <laughs> and having having his guidance to, to build something that was functional and optimized was was a really nice experience. Uh, so during my ASIM, which was uh, American material culture, I spoke with uh, my professor who was one of the lead um, people on, a, on the dig site in Amachi down in the south of Colorado, which was a World War II relocation camp uh, for Japanese citizens. And during that, she was talking about how uh, about all the archaeology side and at the same time I was working on different VR applications and it just clicked that this might be an interesting route to take in VR so I went home from class and made a quick demo. Uh, I built the barracks, the interiors and the character, I guess the, the player would be able to move around the area and look at different things and um, going forward would have had chat bubbles kind of come up and narrate different things when you were looking at different things. Um, I was a product manager intern. It gave me um, 
some background and some experience in what the company does, understand um, what their business is. Because I was um, able to take kind of a, a more diverse set of classes while having that development background um, at the same time. So it, they ended up hiring me back because I can talk to people and um, understand the de development side of things. So for people who are interested in, in the applied computing or computer science degree, I would say that one of DU's biggest strengths is the faculty. Um, the class sizes are pretty small and they, they get to know you pretty well. I'm in and out of their offices all the time, just hanging out. Um, and that's pretty nice to, to be in a small environment where your professors are, are really active and su in supporting you. That opportunity to double major in something, to sample courses, if you want to go that approach, which is pretty much my undergrad was, was take courses all over the place. Um, and just everything that interested me. That opportunity exists here, which is something that I think most of our students should take advantage of. You have the opportunity there to take courses that synergize well with whatever else you're studying because I mean the real point of the applied computing degree is to sort of link the computer science field to something else. 